the next element that we have is the gyrator okay now just like the transformer the gyrator also is a two port element uh we saw the causality of the transformer also in the last lecture uh, we saw that uh, how the transformer relation it's a flow to flow relation or an effort to effort relation and we saw that if flow is input flow is also output by the transformer uh, if effort is input effort is also output by the transformer so the transformer is a flow to flow or effort to effort relationship that's why the causality for the transformer appears like this this is the pattern of causality for the transformer uh, for the gyrator which is the last element in this set which we are going to see uh, if we have a gyrator with bonds 1 and 2 like this there is a gyrator modulus mu associated with it and if this is e1 f1 uh, this is e2 f2 so these are the efforts and flows respectively uh, we have e2 is equal to mu f1 <coughs> the effort here unlike the transformer it is related to the flow on the input side so it is a flow to effort converter okay unlike the transformer it's a flow to effort converter and if you take this as the relationship for the gyrator and apply the uh, same principle of conservation energy conservation for the gyrator it's a power conserving uh, gyrator it's just like the transformer it doesn't store power or it doesn't destroy power so whatever power comes in has to go out and so e1 f1 has to be equal to e2 f2 so e2 f2 can also be written e2 can be elaborated as mu f1 here and you can compare the left and right hand sides here you will see that if this relationship is to be held always then e1 has to be equal to mu times f2 okay so while we specified the relationship for one side e2 is equal to mu f1 we automatically got at automatically got a relationship in the other direction e1 equal to mu f2 okay so this is a relationship which automatically emerges out okay this is uh, an example of a mechanical gyrator you have a gyroscope you have a disk spinning at very high angular velocity and uh, if you apply a force f1 uh, in fact if you apply a if you if you provide a, a velocity uh, i'm sorry if you apply a force f1 you experience on the output side you experience an a velocity f2 which is v given by v2 here which is perpendicular to the force which you are applying likewise uh, when you apply a force f2 you get a velocity v1 or if you apply a velocity v2 you will get a force f1 which is perpendicular to it so this is the nature of uh, the gyroscope gyroscopic uh, element if you have held a uh, motor in your hand a play motor in your hand a toy motor uh, and uh, while it is rotating and if you have tried to move it okay if you have tried to turn its orientation change its orientation you will experience that uh, if you try to move it um, if you try to turn it you experience a force uh, or a moment uh, in the other direction in a perpendicular direction that is because of the uh, gyroscopic effect and uh, one can experience it by holding the motor in the hand while it is rotating okay so this is uh, 
about the gyrator, mechanical gyrator. Uh, here F2 is equal to mu V1 or F1 equal to mu V2. This is the relationship which is valid. And you can see it is a effort to flow or a flow to effort relation. So you provide flow here, you get effort. Provide flow here, you get effort. It's like that, okay? Uh, for the causality for the gyrator, naturally because it's a flow to effort or effort to flow device, the causality for the gyrator will always be if you, it will output an effort if you provide it with flow. Okay, because it's a flow to effort converter. And if you do the reverse, if you provide it with effort, then it will, if you provide it with effort, it will, it will uh, output flow. So this is uh, the causal relationship for the gyrator, the causal pattern for the gyrator element. So we have seen all the nine elements that go into uh, uh, making a bond graph model. And uh, now we will uh, try to model some physical systems as examples using this uh, set of tools which we have now. Very few tools. We have the power arrow, the bond, power bond. We have the causal stroke. And we have the nine elements of bond graph, two SEs, two junctions, transformer, gyrator, the I, C and R elements. So with these few tools in our kit, we can model the physical system dynamics in any energy domain, in any energy domain. So you can imagine the power of bond graph. It is not dependent on the uh, nature of the energy domain. It's just based on these tools, okay? And that's why it's called a unified approach to the modeling of physical system dynamics. Uh, today we will uh, proceed with some examples. So this was about the gyrator. We saw how uh, E2, uh, how uh, E2 is related to F1 by E2 equal to mu F1 and how E1 is related to F2 by E1 equal to mu F2. And this is obtained because of the power conserving nature of the gyrator. Uh, so you can see that it is a flow to an effort or a effort to a flow device. So this is flow to effort. So in this case, the causal strokes, uh, they, uh, they are placed uh, because this becomes the effort receiving end, the causal stroke will come here. So I'll just uh, represent the causal strokes. So this is the effort receiving end. And uh, you can also place a causal stroke here because this is the bond which is bringing in the information of flow. And this is how, so flow is going in, but effort is coming out. Flow is going in, effort is coming out. So this is the way uh, the causality appears for this system. Uh, what we have here as an example uh, is that of a, a permanent magnet DC motor. So you can see here in this example, we have a voltage source and there's the armature winding. Uh, for the armature winding, we have uh, the resistance of the winding, which is discretized here having resistance RA and uh, the winding has an inductance LA, okay? So 
the voltage that is applied across the windings is Vt, V of t. At any time t, it is a value V. Uh, let us assume that the current that flows through the armature is Ia. So current is actually flow over here on the input side. Okay. Uh, what what does the DC motor do actually? It produces a torque. Uh, on the mechanical side, uh, due to this current, a torque is experienced on the mechanical shaft, on the shaft of this uh, DC motor. And uh, if there is an inertia coupled to it, then uh, there will be an angular momentum uh, produced. There will be a change in angular momentum because of this torque. Okay, so. Uh, you will uh, see that the constitutive equation uh, for the gyrator element it is given by uh, it's given by the torque produced is equal to uh, a constant which is 2r into n into l into b multiplied by i into a now what is this 2r n l b uh, 2 is uh, uh, it represents twice uh, because it's a winding. So you have R is the radius of the commutator segment, uh, 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 radius of the winding, the cylinder on which the winding is done. N is the number of turns. L is the length of the cylinder. Uh, I'll discuss this uh, derivation with you in more details in one of our subsequent lectures. Uh, but for now, you can just try to understand this. And B is the magnetic field. So uh, that's uh, due to these permanent magnets. OK, so the we assume that the shape is such that you have a uniform field. So 2R NLB. So this product is taken as a constant in this motor. Uh, so here you have torque which is an effort is equal to this constant which is given by mu multiplied by ia which is f1 now, it need not always be a constant okay but uh, in this case uh, we take it as a constant so e2 is equal to mu times f1 so it's a flow to effort relationship so the effort 2 that is a torque that is produced is equal to this mu multiplied by f1 which is a current through the armature now on the uh, you see the advantage of using bond graph is that it reveals also the other phenomena that is associated with this device because the output shaft rotates because there is an angular momentum on the on the mechanical side what happens to the electrical side is that it experiences a back EMF. So it experiences a difference of potential because of the rotation on the output side. And that back EMF given by EB is mu times omega. Omega is the uh, angular velocity with which the output shaft is turning. So EB, that is the effort here on side one, is equal to mu times omega, which is a flow on the side two. Okay, so you can see that both these relationships are respected in this case of the permanent magnet DC motor problem. Uh, naturally, you know how you are going to place the causal strokes. You have the flow and you have the effort. So causal causality is shown correctly here. Uh, 